Good day students. Today let us look into interference of light by division of amplitude due to reflected light. Here light is made to fall obliquely on a plane parallel thin film. That is light is not falling perpendicularly on the thin film. It is falling at an angle theta upon the thin film. For that let us assume a thin film of thickness t and refractive index mu equal to 1.45. That is the refractive index of oil. Okay. And this thin film is placed in air. So the surrounding medium has a refractive index of 1. When light from point A falls upon this thin film, it divides on the upper boundary. Okay. So it divides at point B into two rays. The reflected ray travels towards C and the refracted ray travels towards the lower boundary of the thin film. Okay. Now at the lower boundary, light again gets divided into a reflected and transmitted component. This reflected component will reach the upper surface where it again undergoes reflection and refraction. Now the refracted ray goes towards E. Now to do the proper calculation we are going to take into consideration a few more points in this diagram. Let us draw a bisector at angle F. It meets the point at G. Okay. Here two right angle triangles will thus be formed. Right angle triangle BGF and right angle triangle DGF. Again let us draw a perpendicular towards BC from the point B and it meets at the point H. Again, we have a right angle triangle there, BHD. The two coherent beams HP and DE are derived from the single source AB, right? Hence, these two beams can interfere and produce an interference pattern. Here, the path length HP is identical to DE, okay? So the optical path difference from the rays uh, generating from a single source A will be the additional path traveled that is the optical path difference will be mu into mu of this uh, medium mu oil into Bf plus Fd minus the path by the second ray mu into Bh. Here mu of the surrounding medium is air. Hence, we can write the optical path difference is equal to mu oil into Bf plus Fd minus Bh. Okay, that will be the path difference between these two interfering waves. The actual path difference or the true path difference will be the optical path difference along with the path difference due to phase change upon the reflection. Okay, so that is given as delta minus lambda by 2. Now in this figure let us also uh, calculate certain angles. So the angle between the normal and the incident ray will be the angle of incidence I represented in this yellow arc. Again due to uh, loss of reflection I will be equal to R, hence this angle is also I, right. Now uh, due to geometry, we have that perpendicular at B, that is the normal at B, uh, to be at 90 degrees, hence the angle CBD will be 90 minus I, okay. Now if that is 90 minus I, the angle at H is 90 degrees, then the remaining angle will be I itself. 
Okay. Now let the angle of refraction be R. So here, this angle BFD will be R. And by the loss of reflection, again, angle GFD will again be R. Now let us look into the mathematics of this figure. We will consider different triangles from this figure. So you can pause the video and draw this diagram neatly. Okay then. From triangle BFG, okay, cos R is given as adjacent side by hypotenuse, that is FG divided by BF. Okay. Now, BF thus is rewritten as FG by cos R. Here, FG is the thickness of this oil fillet. Hence, we write C divided by cos R. Okay. Now, BF plus FD is equal to 2 times BF itself. Okay. Hence, we can write 2C divided by cos R. In the next triangle, BHG, okay, here sine I is given as opposite side by hypotenuse, that is BH divided by BD. Mm -hmm. Thus, BH can be written as BD sine I, that is BD is represented as 2BG, okay. BD is written as twice BG sine I. Now, in this triangle BFG, sine R can be written as opposite side by hypotenuse BG by BF. Thus, BG is written as BF sine R, that is T by cos R sine R, that is T tan R. Hence, BH will be written as 2 BG sine I. That is 2 times t tan r into sin i. Here, sin i can be substituted using Snell's law. We have sin i by sin r is equal to mu. Okay. Now, substituting for sin i, we get 2 t tan r into mu sin r. Okay. That is 2 mu t sin square r by cos r. Let us number these equations as shown. Substituting the second and third equations in the first equation, we get optical path difference as delta is equal to, it was given as mu into BF plus FD minus BH, right? So substituting for all these terms, we can write mu into 2c by cos r minus 2 mu t sin square r by cos r. Here we have common terms. 2 mu t by cos r is a common term here. Taking outside the remaining term will be 1 minus sin square r. That is cos square r. So cos square r by cos square r gives 2 mu t cos r. This is the optical path difference. The actual Actual path difference or the true path difference will be delta minus path difference due to phase change on reflection. That is delta minus lambda by 2. Okay, so we have derived the actual path difference. Next, we will just write the conditions for constructive and destructive interference. So, true path difference is 2 mu t cos r minus lambda by 2. So, for oblique incidence of light on a plane parallel thin film, the condition for bright fringes or constructive interference is given as true path difference is equal to integral multiple of wavelength. That is, 2 mu t cos r minus lambda by 2 is equal to n lambda. Taking all the lambda terms to the right side, I can write 2 mu t cos r is equal to n plus half lambda. That is, 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Okay. Now, condition for the dark fringes that is destructive interference is given as 
true path distance should be an odd integral multiple of wavelength. That is, 2 mu t cos r minus lambda by 2 is equal to 2n plus 1 lambda by 2. Now, taking all the lambda terms to the right side, we get 2 mu t cos r is equal to, you should do the mathematics and you will get n plus 1 lambda. Here, n can have values 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now, since n plus 1 does not have any physical significance, we can rewrite this as 2 mu t cos r is equal to n lambda, where n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now, here from these conditions, we can see that the interference condition depend on the variables mu, t, r and lambda. Okay. Now, the first point, if we use a parallel beam of light to fall on a plane parallel thin film. Okay. So, if the beam of light is parallel, we can say that the angle r remains a constant. And if the thin film is a plane parallel thin film, that is, its thickness is uniform all over, its refractive index is a constant and its thickness will be a constant, hence, hence mu t will be constant. Okay. Now, when monochromatic light is used and it is falling on such a thin film, what happens? All these variables, mu, t, r and lambda are made to be constant. So, here you won't observe an interference pattern. You will just observe a uniformly bright surface or a uniformly dark surface. You won't be able to observe fringe pattern. Okay, so this uniform brightness is due to interference, but you won't see an interference pattern there. Okay, uh, vice versa we can see we can view a uniformly dark uh, region or dark film if the destructive interference condition is satisfied and that is due to interference but there won't be any interference pattern here okay now when white light falls on such a thin film that is the thin film is having a constant mu value thickness is constant the angles falling on the thin filling remain constant and only lambda is varying, okay? Okay, now only certain wavelengths have the condition for destructive interference, okay? And they will be absent in the reflected light. All the other colors will remain in the reflected light. So what we see will be that we will see a colored film with one color any one color being absent from it. Okay, it will depend upon the thickness which color is absent. Okay, so any co one color will be absent from it. What is the difference when we use a narrow light source or a broad light source? Okay, now when a narrow light source is used, it limits the area of the film that is due. That is, we can see in this image that a narrow light source uh, represents a small beam to fall on this thin film. So only in a small area, we can see interference due to reflected light. Okay. So in this small area, we will only be able to view a few fringes. Okay. But when an extended light source is used, okay, the uh, rays are not parallel rays. Uh, a lot of rays will happen to fall upon this thin film from different directions. Okay, and they all can come upon the observer at the same time. So R can have different values. Okay, and uh, oh, again uh, here, so different colors. Uh, will obey constructive interference and different colors will obey destructive interference and fall upon our eye. 
Now, the thickness of the film is uh, recommended to be less than that of the coherence length of the incident ray. So in order to get an interference pattern, the thickness of the film should be less than the coherence length of the incident light wave. Now by coherence length, we mean that if uh, we consider a coherent source or coherent wave, the wave will remain uh, continuous for a long time. Okay. We cannot have, we do not have any wave that is remaining continuous for infinite time. They will only travel as wave trains or wave packets. This wave packet can be for long lengths. Okay, they can be in centimeters, they can be in meters, they can be in kilometers. Okay, so this length of this wave train is called the coherence length of the coherence wave. Okay. So, in order to observe interference, the thickness of the thin film that we use should be less than the coherence length of the incident wave. Thick films do not exhibit interference pattern. So, here the thin film in the dimension of microns will show an interference pattern, whereas a thick film can be at the range of centimeters, it will never show an interference pattern. With that, we have come to the end of today's class. Thank you.